I got more stuff to hand out. My name is Malcolm Cecil. I'm the instructor. I got a couple more things to hand out. And as you can see in this building, the, the uh, room numbers aren't all that easy to read sometimes. So we may have a few people just coming. So uh, let, me, let me show you a couple things that I'll hand out that you can work on in the next couple minutes before we get going. First of all, this is a release form, a release form. Uh, and the reason for this is because you can see in this classroom, we have cameras and microphones. There are the microphones, there are the cameras. Uh, and today the cameras are gonna be pointing at me um, because we don't have your permission to show your likeness. But usually this class uh, is recorded, it's live streamed while we do it. Um, so you can watch the course on a live stream if you uh, can't be here in person. And it's also archived. Um, so because of that, we want to get your permission. Um, so this is the uh, uh, release form. And uh, if it happens that you want to be in the class, but you don't ever want to be filmed, there are a couple spots you can sit in, which are kind of the out of sight of the cameras. So especially up here, uh, I think over here. And um, you know we can work that out once I see if that is the case, if anyone doesn't want to be filmed. We want to respect that. Um, as, term, as far as audio goes, if that's a concern, I'd say, well, you know, don't don't ask a question today or you know talk <laughs> if you don't want to be recorded today. And then we'll see, we'll have see, you know, again, whoever uh, doesn't have the permission, well, you can decide whether you want to be in the classroom uh, or you know watch it streaming. And if you are streaming, you can communicate with us by chat. Uh, so let's see, let me tell you about the class. Okay, I've been teaching this uh, for about eight years now. Uh, it's obviously a class in electronic media. Um, so we cover media such as radio and television, the old mass media. And we are looking forward into a world of online streaming media and social media. So we look at all of those. Um, sometimes a device like your phone can basically encompass all of them, uh, but we would leave out things like text messaging and uh, making phone calls and stuff like that because those are sort of one-to-one -one communications. Those are like me calling you. Whereas what we look at in this class is me creating uh, you know, some kind of video or something and putting it out so that millions of people can see it. So you know, of course that was television in its day and now it's all kinds of different ways of getting video. video. Uh, that's, that's the media that we cover. So electronic media, but not sort of one-to-one -one communication, one-to-many. And then we look at the history of it. So in the first few weeks, we'll talk about the history of radio and television, and then the history of online interaction through the internet, and then social media. And then we'll also look at the way the businesses are structured, so the entertainment industry. So again, historically, we might look at how advertising started off in radio, and then moved on television, how it works online and stuff. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what it's like to work in some kinds of media organizations, as media operations and stuff. And we'll talk about how ratings work. Um, we'll talk about social science research into uh, media and media effects. You know, because the people have studied it for close on to 100 years. You know, as soon as they realized that media is important, they started uh, studying it. How's everybody doing on their uh, little name cards? Great, that's fantastic. So uh, um, that's broadly what we'll do in the class. Um, we're looking at a page from Canvas, it's called. How many people have um, seen Canvas before, had a class using it before? Okay, so any, anybody new to Canvas? Anybody has new Canvas yet? Do you, you want to spend five minutes with me after class? I just show you how it works. Okay, because and anybody else new to Canvas? So just uh, so far, one person. Uh, fantastic. So um, we can look at that. So Canvas uh, is where a lot of stuff for our class happens, and uh, so uh, it has this layout. Um, you got the syllabus that we're going to talk about there. Uh, and this thing is important. Modules, well, grades. Grades are real important. You can always find your grades up here. 
I find a list of assignments that are there. If you don't happen to be with us, but you want to talk to us while we're having live stream lectures, uh, I will be checking out the chat link for now. So I'm the only person online. That makes a lot of sense because we're just getting going. But if you are distant and you're watching us, do log in to chat and let us know that you're uh, watching us. So what I did want to show you is that under modules, there is all this stuff about, first of all, uh, information about how to use Canvas itself, textbook, uh, kind of support you can get with computers and the like here on campus, uh, some other stuff that I wanted up there, the research papers that we're doing, and then, uh, you know, week after week, the stuff that I talk about in class. So like on, on February 26 and 28, we'll be talking about how media consumption has become very audience driven, very personalized. You don't no, no longer have to like sit there, oh, it's Tuesday night, I gotta watch my show. You know, you can get your show streamed to you on demand whenever you want, you know. So that's the topic of February 26. And then we got PowerPoints that I use in class that you can see and we got uh, uh, other other materials that are up there, you know. And uh, each week I kind of try to say uh, okay, this is what we're doing. This is what you should watch out for this week. So if you, you know, missed a class or something, you're wondering, okay, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, you can always email me, of course, but you can find out just looking at this uh, on the website. Okay? So uh, the next time we'll meet up is for that quiz. Uh, and we do a review before quizzes and exams and stuff. So you can come into class, you're welcome to come in for the review, or you can watch the review streaming online if you want. Same thing for the midterm, March 14th. Uh, on April 25th, uh, we have that industry news presentation. So that's where you come in and you do like a very short one or two minute presentation in front of the class about something. I'll tell you about that a little later. And then the final exam, the last thing is in the exam period. So yeah, we, question. So we don't meet every Tuesday and Thursday? We do, actually. So we'll be here. If you choose to come to class, it's just like a regular class. Every okay. Tuesday and Thursday, we, we have a class. I lecture. And there won't be as many people here because some people choose to like stay home and watch it streaming. And so it's there for your convenience, basically, oh, okay. if you can't make it. And, uh, and you can arc, you know, look at the archive if it uh, turns out Tuesday, Thursday, you, you, you know. You missed a Thursday or something, a Thursday morning, you had a dentist appointment or something. Uh, you couldn't stream it, but you can watch in the archive. Okay, so thanks. Great. Good question there. Uh, so just a regular class, but also you can watch it streaming. Uh, and because I give you the option, I still have to say, okay, there's got to be these days when we are here. So any questions about that part of it? Yeah, is there yeah. Like a big difference between uh, coming to class and not as far as like experience or like learning the material? I think so, because you can ask questions in class and you can give your comments and you know share how you see stuff. And it is a class where we do have those discussions uh, versus, you know, it's much harder to communicate through chat when you're not in the room, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I leave it up to you. It, sometimes, you know, if you are not going to come into every class, it, it helps, in other words, to come into every class in order to stay on track and to know what's going on. And if you don't, then you have to follow along on Canvas and, and you know, uh, get to know what's happening just through watching the stream and, and, you know, reading the Canvas site. But that's more work for you. Yep. Video will be on campus, or pardon me. The video will be on campus. The video will be on campus. Well, uh, the streaming information is here. There's actually a service that does the stream. So, uh, in a couple of places on the home page, uh, you can find that information there or there. You click on it, and so basically, the stream is here. CCSF.edu webcast. So the link is there. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of classes that uh, actually use this and stuff. So you'll be looking for our class. And there we are. We're right at the top right now. So the live stream, although it's like, ugh, there's 100 things written here. But here it says BCST 100, Intro to Electronic Media in Progress. 
then click on view event and you can see it that way. Okay? And uh, then for the archive, it's here, second link. So uh, this is a YouTube of the EATV and oh, there I am from uh, just before the holidays, another class that I do in here. So that's what it'll look at like, you know, they, they are listed in uh, order of posting and stuff. So you'll be able to look at stuff then if you want. So that's the streaming information. And as I said, you can reach that right off the homepage there or there. It's also, there's a link in the syllabus. So uh, uh, shoot, uh, any, any questions that came out of it that you weren't able to answer for each other, either questions about like what's going on or things about, oh, I thought this was going to be cool and I'm looking forward to it. And Sadiq. What's up with the textbook? Pardon me? What's up with the textbook? What's up with the textbook? So uh, it's on page one, electronic media then, now, and later. Uh, you can rent it. It's, there's a copy on reserves in the library. There's also, elect yeah, uh, thanks. Fenris is holding it up. That's what it looks like. Okay. The color purple. The color purple. An old movie that I saw when I was uh, in diapers. No, actually, I was an adult. So, so uh, going to going to the Rosenberg Library website uh, through this link here, library. We open this up in a new tab. So this is a good reason to be there in uh, in. Um, Canvas, right? And I'm going to look at the title, which I've forgotten, but it's written in the syllabus, Electronic Media. And let me go in there. And uh, we have a license on this book where I think 30 people can be reading it at once through the library website. So I just need to find this article on broadcast. So, so Famous, I, Famous had his hand up, just a sec, yeah? Yeah, you can also look up, you need to order the book off the bookstore website with your student ID. Pop right up. Okay, terrific. So, I just want to find, I don't want a subject guide, I don't want, okay, let me perhaps look for it. I tell you, once you find it, it's basically a free textbook, which is great. Medoff, so let me enter Medoff. It's read only, right? It's not for copy. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't be able to copy it this way. Sure. Let me go back to electronic media. Well, this is a bit of a bust, but I can tell you, uh, we do have access to this. And let's just filter by this subject, maybe. Hands up, uh, Kyra? Kira. Kira, sorry. Um, when do we need the textbook by? Uh, next week would be great. Okay. Yeah. Um, find the exact way to search. See, it is a lot easier to search through the outside the library. Uh, you can also rent on Amazon. I did it oh, yeah. 19 bucks to rent it. Thank you, Rick. Okay, so let's put this up. Rental options. Does the bookstore still rent? Yes. Okay. So Not so much. Amazon, $19, bookstore, CCSF, bookstore, probably more, I would expect. Uh, so there's your rental, uh, library, you can get a reserve copy. I, there's one or more reserve copies, but it's limited to a few hours that you can check it out. Or, like I said, through this library website, you should be able to get an online copy. And I was told that 30 students could book that out at once. So uh, we will pursue that, I guess. But we won't waste more time uh, in this class doing it. So you could get it through the library. And to buy it, uh, you know, I think most people who are here at the college know that the bookstore is usually more expensive than anything like Amazon, all right? Uh, so Amazon, I'm not plugging them, far from it. Uh, there's also something called Chegg. Has anybody used that before? Rental and purchase, they have good prices there. Usually it's a website called Chegg, chicken and egg. Uh, and then CCSF bookstore, I guess. Okay, so this is the kind of class where, you know, the textbook is really uh, useful. Um, Let's see, in, 
in my modules, I give you every week the, the PowerPoints that we're using to, there we go. So in the modules every week, and I'll just pull them up before class, you know, in the, in the PowerPoints, which are done by the uh, textbook um, company and stuff. So they have all the information that's in the textbook. It's just like PowerPoint single line facts and stuff like that. So, uh, however, that's going to be up there each week. So um, that's kind of like how you'll know what it is we're covering and what we're doing by looking at the PowerPoints and you know reading along in the textbook. So assume that uh, our schedule looks like this. So this week there's no reading assignment. Next week we start in on chapter one. So when it says you know chapter chapter one on January 22nd, January 24th, assume that your homework is to read that chapter over, you know during the week or preferably before class, but whatever, and reading it over that way. So each week is basically organized that way. Week three, we're doing chapter two. Week four, we're doing chapter three. So we kind of, we follow them in order pretty much. So you can always find out which one to read and where we're at in the textbook by looking at the modules. Okay, right, great question. Other, other questions or observations about the syllabus? Yeah? Do you know for sure the bookstore has it? Like yesterday, I tried to go to the. They didn't have it. I don't know. I didn't go. I, you know, I did my job and told them that there'd be, you know, X number of students. They should order X number of books. Yeah, because I tried they to didn't. get a book for another class, but they didn't have it. So. And you lined up probably for a while. Yeah. yeah. Sorry I just, about that. I just left. And okay. I'm gonna go get okay. it today. I mean, I can if if I know that it's not there, I can say, hey, Rose, what's up? In fact, I can probably stop over this afternoon or something just okay. to see if it's there. Again, it's more expensive there than some of the other places. So. Yeah. And there's always a Kindle version, too. Yeah. Uh, I hate to bring the deals up in taking some business class. My professor did the same thing. They don't care. We all know. It better be a more progressive order the book somewhere else you can. By the time we wait for them, a few weeks later, we'll be high. Oh, so you're saying that the, uh, the, the books... Same thing, marketing. The bookstore... Uh, one is the same thing. They really off the records. Yeah. So don't count on it. Don't waste your time. Okay. Cannot. So they don't, Just maybe haven't they ordered, haven't ordered enough books. Yeah, right? they, you know, they, they order it and then the book for them, and then two weeks later, they still don't have a book, they don't have enough. Oh, gosh. What can you do, right? Eh? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I don't, what's your name? Michael. Michael, okay. Yeah. Hey, Michael, cool. Are you registered in the class if you want an oh, ad code? End, yeah. yeah, I'll give you a, yeah. At the end. At the end. Fantastic. Okay. Other, come on, uh, you guys had a nice chat and you read over stuff. Did, what, what did you highlight on your paper? The research essay. The research essay, yep. Okay, fantastic. So here at our modules, there's like the second thing here is about the research papers. And so uh, there's uh, two research papers uh, in this class. One is due on February 28th, and the other one's due way towards the end of the class on May 7th. Uh, they're about four pages long. Uh, the source of the research is a textbook, so I don't ask you to go beyond the textbook unless you want to and you feel it's necessary. Another good reason to have the textbook. So the textbook is full of facts and dates and you know technical information and tons of stuff. So the challenge of the research paper is basically uh, to you know pull some of those facts, some of that information we know is true because it's in the textbook, and use it in an essay that answers one of the prompts that are assigned. So those are the general guidelines for the essays. And we'll, of course, look them over in detail before you actually have to write an essay. But now I'm going to look into the prompt for February 28th. So that's the first research paper assignment. And I give you uh, here four possible topics for your four-page research paper. So you choose one of these. And you decide, you know, you work with a textbook to draw out facts. And if there are any other, you know, uh, sources of information like Wikipedia or uh, other online sites or sites that uh, we come through the library, you integrate them as well. So here, for instance, would be one question. This one will be due February 28th. You choose one out of the four. 
So Fox, UPN, and the WB, which is now CW, employed certain programming strategies to compete with the big three networks. So that's CBC, ABC, uh, sorry, CBS, ABC, and NBC. Discuss the strategy used at one of these stations, one of these smaller networks, and whether you believe it is successful, what sort of impact, positive or negative, the strategy had on broadcast programming overall. So that would be a question. And uh, so the sources of information would be, you know, uh, historical information about the CW, let's say, and how they program stuff, or Fox. Uh, I wouldn't go with WB or the UPN. WB basically is now defunct. It became the CW. Uh, and so you get information, facts, and then you basically say, OK, this is, this is how they joined the network broadcasting business. You know, Imagine, and we'll talk about this uh, each week before you actually have to write these, but uh, you know, you've got three huge networks, ABC, CBS, NBC. A couple of them have been around since 1920. Okay, 60 years on, 1980, somebody says, I can beat them. I'm going to beat them. How are you going to do that? You've got to have a pretty good strategy to go to war with these three giant networks. Fox and the CW did it successfully. This, so this is just write the story of how they did it, drawing facts from the text. Michael? I think you might want to dig the archives a little deep. NBC been out since 1902, since the radio years. All right, get me that textbook. <laughs> 1902, the they're, they're... reason I say that because they did a lot of political news like C-SPAN. I'm from D.C., so they did a lot of uh, work out there. 1902? They had a lot of audio work around the motion picture. I'm afraid to say they were still just radioing back and forth from right. ship to shore in no 1902. TV. There was right. no TV then. Yeah, okay. They've been around for a long time, though. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's take it up next week when you've looked at the chapter in the textbook, and you can bring in your information. But uh, textbook says this is uh, 1920s is the decade of the big radio networks that then became TV networks and stuff. But uh, I'm always open for. That's when, they, that's when they had the big boom. For good discussion, yeah, 1920s, big, big, uh, golden age of radio, basically. Right. So uh, that is like one of the topics that you could choose for your research essay. Uh, there's four. We're going to talk about them each week. Like when we get into history of radio and stuff, we'll be talking about one of these prompts. So I'll try to prepare you that way, and uh, yeah. So questions about that. Four pages. Basic source is a textbook. Additional sources, if you like. And you write on one of these topics that um, are assigned. Yeah? And it has to be four pages? It does, yeah. Does it four does. full pages of writing in addition to like a bibliography or something. OK. okay. So, so that kind of thing is in the uh, guidelines here. So again, I will be talking about this you know, endlessly. And there's a little rubric here at the bottom, like your paper should have an introduction. You should organize it. You should have you know, an argument that you're trying to make, a summary conclusion, bibliography, no spelling, spelling mistakes. So this would hold for both of those research papers. Okay. All right, Sadiq has asked two questions. Who has something else? Something else for us. Yeah, Michael? I'm not necessarily, I'm not going to say I'm not necessarily in this major because I'm dealing with uh, visual media design. But one of the coverings I'm dealing with that's dealing with broadcasting is sound engineering. Mm. And how much of that are we going to cover in here? Whoa, very, very little. Before I get to that class, because yeah. I wanted to go to that class first, but it was full, and I was like, let me get a good handle this one. Was that uh, BCST 120 that you wanted to go to? Yeah. You should you should still go and, and ask uh, if you can you know add and just check it out or see if it's too full or not. I know it's like jam packed and it's oh, yeah. I'm like clueless. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let me say first of all, classes like that one are hands on, learn how to produce something classes. This is, you know, some people would call it a theory class, but it's full of information about the broadcast industries. We don't actually produce any audio, any, any radio, any television, nothing here. 
So this is where we talk about you know, the history and the influence of broadcasting itself. So it's more like a history, technical, social studies type of class. How do I turn this thing off? <laughs> That's just a message to myself that I, I'm running out of time. Uh, so. Um, that still, that still kind of interests me. I'm always been a historian type of guy. Cool. Also, I also want to know what I'm getting into before I get into it. So. All right, all right. So I'm glad you'll, you know, I think this class will uh, have something of interest for people who want to work in the electronic media in the sense that you'll get an idea of, you know, what the working conditions in radio and television are like. It's more difficult in online media because they're so diverse, you know, depending on if you work for CNET, it's a lot like working for CBS. CBS used to, you know, actually directly own CNET. Uh, on the other hand, if you work, you know, in a kind of digital ad agency, I really don't know what the conditions will be like. Uh, so we'll try to give you a sense of what it's like working in the business a little bit. And then the other thing is, you know, media impacts all of our lives. Like, you know, uh, a few years ago, we weren't all sitting in class looking on our phones before anything happened. I mean, it's incredible the transformations that the technology brings. So, I also think there will be something for you if you're interested in, you know, what technology does to society and what, you know, how, how we are coping with and integrating all these incredible communication tools into our lives. So this is the place to talk about that. Yep. Do we have, Jacob. Do we have like an internship for this classroom? Oh, in, in the, our department, we have internships. Yeah. In this class, we definitely don't. So there's a lot of like... Um, pamphlets up front here published by our department. So there's one a kind of an overview that tells you all the things you could do in audio and video production and social media and internships and stuff like that. So there's, there's a bunch of different pamphlets up here. Why don't you grab them and uh, you know, maybe take another class in our department if you like, if it's not all filled up. That's a problem. Just make sure. So what she just said, yes. the internship is for student to work with the department in psychiatry, but lots of the outside business world. No, not, not, that's not true. Yeah, so number one, being in this class has nothing to do with an internship. There is back, back BCST 165 and 160 are classes which are actually internship oh. classes. So that's in our department. If you did do an internship with them, we do have some students who intern in our EATV broadcasting uh, uh, situation here in the in, in the college, there are others who work in companies outside the college, and they kind of have to arrange that for themselves. But yeah, it's a college-endorsed internship. You get credit for it in a different class. Yeah. As we have also amazing classes in how to make television, how to make music, or live sound, or sound for film and television, uh, but those are different classes. So here we're really talking about the history and the business of it rather than how to do it. We do have a lot of classes about how to do it. Okay. All right. Think through more more questions for me. But uh, in the looking through the assignments list, we've covered the research essay, um, the midterm, the final exam, the quizzes. As you can imagine, uh, they are multiple choice exams. Uh, for instance, the midterm and the final each have 50 multiple choice questions on them. The quizzes have 25. Um, at, on Thursdays in our classes, I do something called cahoots. Has anybody had a cahoot in another class? Some folks are nodding. I have to look. Kibwe, you're nodding. Could you tell everyone what a... What a... Uh, it's just mostly like a quiz thing. Like we go on the internet and just do it through your phone. Right, yeah. It's like a game, basically. Yeah, it's, it, it kind of, we try to make, you know, getting those exam questions out in front of you, make it a little more fun. So a, a Kahoot is like up on the board, we'll project questions, and if you use the app on your phone, you can vote on what you think the good answers are, okay? And then I use those for review before the uh, exams. I'll make all those available to you again. You can play them at home in order to review, okay? So that's how the exams and the quizzes work. So the other huge thing is 10 online discussions, 100 points total. That's 10 points per each online discussion. 
So basically what they do is uh, the discussions give you a chance. You want to want to switch those off. All right, there it is. So let's look ahead. There is no discussion this week because we're just getting started. But if we look ahead till next week, which is the first of those discussion worth ten points, um, here it is. Uh, there's a little video up there to kind of spark your interest uh, in a topic. But it's basically following on to something that we've talked about in class. So it says here, radio remains relatively popular and competitive despite competition from other media. You know, in class, we could talk about, you know, how many people actually listen to radio? How many people use Spotify? Yeah. Probably a lot more use like streaming, right? I Michael? All of them. All of them, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's encouraging for radio. Because a possibility is that no one listens to radio anymore and everybody goes for those online services. So the question here is just talk. Are there other services or devices that have taken radio's place? You know, and Michael would say, it hasn't completely, but you know, I used to listen to radio back and now I, I stream on Pandora or Spotify or Apple Music, or whatever. Do you think they'll do a better job than radio? Like, and, you know, and again, we'll talk about this in class, and I'm really asking you just here to continue on and you're thinking about it you know but just off the top of your head quick quick you, th you know Spotify versus you know radio KMEL or something like that what's the difference what are you missing yeah with KMEL and those wire those are wire radio stations you get from a distance whereas the internet you can get it from anywhere right right so when you listen to KMEL, do you get a sense like you're listening to like something that's coming out of this area, something that's coming out of here? Oh yeah. If yeah. You get something out of the area, it's going to be within a certain uh, distance. Right. Until right. You, until you leave out, that's when you know you start hitting the fuzz. That's what I used to hear when I used to leave town all the time. Right. 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 I know internet radio. You can listen to that going across the whole country. Same radio station. Exactly. Well, some of them have commercials, some of them don't. Right, right. So some people might say, well, that's what I want. I want to have an uninterrupted stream of music anywhere. Other people might say, eh, I prefer, you know, hearing music that comes out of Oakland with, you know, and this was back in the day. I'm not saying KMEL is still locally programming, but there's that possibility anyway. Fenris? Though you do get one exception to that, which is satellite radio. Yes, yeah. that's absolutely right. Yeah. So Sirius XM. That's another one. Well, another thing is the strength of the satellite, because they all come from satellites, but it depends on what kind of satellite. I wish I knew something about satellites more, but... We got a chapter on that, too. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. We got a chapter on that. It's not very, very technical. This is not like a super technical class, but there's a lot of information. I think about cable the same way as you brought it up. I think about stuff like that. Like, I look at this generation now, <laughs> A lot of these 90s and 2000s babies, they, they don't remember, like, way before dish TV and it coming real fast and the bad weather. You had to put antenna on the big, on the big, uh, and on, you know, you had to put, what do they call it? Aluminum Funny floor. Years. Aluminum. <laughs> Funny oh, feet. Just to get good service for a fight night or something. You know? All right, all right. Right. So those of you who are under 25, what do you make of that? <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a comfort. <laughs> the older you get, you get more context. The, the, the younger you are, the more tapped into where things are going. Uh, we have a comment here, and then... Let me come on, I'm mean, 50, so I think it depends on the marketplace. The way you look at the U.S. business is they're going to merge, like the cell phone. Consolidation. So whoever control more consumer wouldn't pay for it. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be for free, continues forever. Yeah. I love to be free, hello, I mean, don't get me wrong, but still, someone pay for it, may not from you, if they're using your personal information, your email, your phone number, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so someone mm -hmm. pay for it. Oh yeah. So I think we will see that in the next couple of years, when the centralized take over, 70% of the market, or the other guy, that we can see how they figure out to the consumer, would you pay for it? Right. At least for two or three years space, Mm -hmm. So if they pay month by month, they just quit, and then you can and then get the income, then you might eventually die down in business might kaboom. Right. So but in this, in this... control, yeah, the consumer behavior, and then it will affect how we, most of us, will 
utilize the wallet system. Got it, got it. Raw computer. Very good. So that would be really, you know, to bring that into radio, obviously network radio uh, over terrestrial radio supported by advertising appears to be free to us. But of course, the way they stay in business is they sell ads on their airwaves, right? Versus, you know, a Spotify or an Apple with a subscription fee, it's financing itself a different way. So that might draw, you know, be something you want to bring up in here and say, can we convince, you know, consumers to stop getting music selected by other people for free and start paying for it given that we can make a choice. And then you look at Sirius XM which practically went bankrupt and you say, well, they're somewhere in the middle. You know, they're they're uh, they're like old radio, but you got to pay a subscription fee and clearly that really didn't work out too well for them because they were two companies that they had to merge just to survive. So uh, I, you know, I really appreciate the, 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 the desire to get into the discussion of the class. Thursday we'll do it, okay? But we're, today we're, we're working on uh, just getting, getting all this clarified. So just, yeah, yes, just to clarify this. Rick. Um, so is it every Sunday night we're going to do the discussion of the live? Every Sunday night is when they're due. Then they'll open up the, on the Monday of that week. So for instance, uh, next Monday this is going to open up, and it's going to be open all week long. If I'm you, not with Canvas, can you explain that? oh yeah, for sure. I mean, in fact, probably one-on-one -on -one would be better. Oh. But like, basically, what that means is that um, you'll be able to click on the discussion and say something in there, basically. Okay. Um, so the way it works is here. You know, you read, you think, as we guys have been doing, and uh, then okay. you get in there and you start. You know, this yeah, is what I think. And then, you know, fill that in, right? And hit post a reply. And uh, there it is. And it's going to appear up there. So um, the sooner you do this, the better a discussion it is because people can come in and read what you thought and respond back to you. So, you know, there's a possibility that uh, either I can reply directly to the post again or I can say something to myself reply just to you know another comment something that somebody else made and say I disagree uh, I can't type but uh, so and go on like that is it true that once you post it is post you gotta change it that's a good question okay. so watch out good point yes uh, okay. you know let's let's keep the discussions constructive and uh, uh, you know uh, if you if you read it over before you hit post, just especially if you're replying to somebody, uh, and I'll be reading them, of course, and I'll, I'll let you know if I think it's you know for some reason I don't know like not nice enough or something for us, but uh, yeah. How long does it have to be here? Uh, I have not set anything. It's a good point. I'd say about 150 words is you know average. Okay. Some people will write more, I think. Some people will write a little less. But the main thing is that you participate every week. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 150 words in a post? Or? In a post, yeah. yeah. Um, again, 100 good words is worth 150, like, just blah, blah, blah words, you know? So that's why I didn't put, like, an absolute uh, uh, number on it. But, you know, it's, it's actually, I think, more important for your grade and for me just that you do, that you participate regularly. So a bit of advice, which is really important for online classes, and since this, you know, a lot of people will maybe not be coming to class all the time, I advise you set aside a time in the week. You know that, like, Monday night I don't have anything to do or Thursday night or something like that and, or Saturday morning or something. Maybe not the best. Pick a time and then give yourself an hour to like do these posts. You know, scan over the question, think about it, post, you know. And uh, because look at the way, you know, look at the way the grade is structured. It's like a hundred points for these posts, right? A hundred and a hundred for the two um, research essays. Right, and then uh, the exams are 100, and then there's sort of like everything else, the quizzes and the presentation, so there's like an extra 100 there. 
If you miss too many of these posts, it's going to bring your grade down radically. If you decide not to do one of the research essays, that's 100 points out of 500. That's 20% of your grade that goes out. So just want to, uh, you know, uh, want to say it's always good to put, to do something, you know, uh, rather than to get a zero on any of these. So in, in, your, in your discussions, you know, I, of course, always encourage you to think deeply and write beautifully about what you're discussing, but also, you know, if it just keep, keep up with it. And for the research essays, you know, we're going to give you a lot of help to getting to writing a good essay. Uh, but I can't help you if you don't do it. Okay, so that's the main thing. You got to do it. Yeah. So really quick, just clarifying there, it's worth ten points, one for the post, and you have to reply to at least someone else's comment. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So this is worth ten points, five for your post, five for your reply. So if you're the first person who goes in there, you know, uh, come back a little bit later and wait till somebody else has posted. Usually people come in a little bit later in the week. And, you know, so again, a reply is just, yeah, I read what you thought. This is, this is what I think about what you said. It can be short. A couple sentences is fine. Okay. So the reply does not be 150? Uh, no, the reply is not 150. And your, your post yourself is, again, 150. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's it for discussions. So those start up, uh, again, they start up next week. There's nothing for this week, but uh, do stay on it. And then each week, uh, when, there's, when there's something major, uh, there won't be a discussion. You know, because I want to leave you the time to do something else. OK. Um, let's see. We discussed the textbook, the required days. Meeting times, right? Yeah. How do you keep attendance when you don't when you're online? Um, when you're attending online, I count on chat, basically. So log into chat. So if you're streaming the class, um, there's just get into chat and you know post and say uh, hi everybody, and um, I'll be then I know that you're there. I always do that at the beginning of the session. And so when you are streaming, just go into chat and say hi so we know you're there. Okay. What's the best way to reach you? Email? Yes, definitely. So um, in the top side of the um, syllabus email, my office is in the Arts Extension Building, which is across the street in uh, Bataway. Um, so you can make an appointment with me or talk to me after class or something like that, or email is good. Question? Other, other stuff? All right, so um, again, uh, on the bottom of page three, it says accommodations here. So uh, we have a service here at City College called the DSPS, uh, which helps basically um, uh, students do as best as they can do in, in classes. So if, for instance, it says here, if you need classroom or testing accommodations because of a disability, or if you have emergency medical information, or you need special arrangements in case the building needs to be evacuated, I would add to that if you need a quiet place to take an exam because you, you, know, you don't want to be distracted, uh, or um, you know, any other accommodations which are something that we can do so that you can really succeed in your classes. The DSPS, their phone numbers are on the fourth page. So call them up and make an appointment and go for an assessment. You'll talk to somebody there and they'll figure out you know, what's possible that can, you know, again, make it as good as possible for you to study here at City, okay? And then the last thing is plagiarism, which I think, you know, we all, uh, we all, we all have an idea about what it is. Um, so it is defined on the uh, City College uh, um, Rules of Student Conduct. The unauthorized use of language and thoughts of another author representing them as your own 
Um, so basically that means you know, copying what somebody else has written, whether it's you know, a friend gives you a term paper from another semester or another course somewhere, which is uh, uh, you, know, you hand in as your own, that's not cool. Or it could be a little bit harder to you know, uh, recognize, which is when you're doing too much quoting from a source, uh, then um, you know, that is either intentional or unintentional plagiarism. So whenever you cite the ideas of somebody else or use the writing of somebody else, you do have to identify where that came from. In the research essays, that's in a, a bibliography. Um, so that is uh, what we expect from you. If you violate that and sort of turn in an essay downloaded from the internet, um, I can't remember when that's happened. It usually doesn't. People in this class, they, they want to be here and talk about things the way they see it. There's plenty of opportunity to do that in the essays as well. So, you know, uh, I, I have not had trouble with that, but we do want to put that out there that you would get a zero if it turns out not to be your work. So that would be trouble. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, uh, the, the rest of the section is, you know, don't cheat on your quizzes and your exams. So when we're doing a quiz or an exam, I'll ask you, you know, they're not open book. So you'll, it'll just be you with the multiple choice. And um, that's the way we'll, we'll do those. So um, any questions about those last two items? Okay. Fantastic. All right, so we have five more minutes. And again, in my homework, <laughs> they recommend that at the end of class, we give you a couple of minutes to think back on, you know, was there anything particularly interesting that you got out of the class? And in this case, because we didn't have that much of a chance to talk about content, although I could tell we were raring to go, you know, and, and, and talk about, you know, radio and the difference with radio and Spotify and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll get more into that on Thursday. But today, just take your little name tag, and on the back, if you could write, you know, what was the most interesting or important thing that came out of today's talk for you? Just write that on the back and then turn these in to me on your way out, okay? And, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday starting up the, uh... yeah, I'll collect these as well. So yeah, thank you, Rick. Uh, turn, in, turn in your release forms on the way out as well. And uh, anyone who wants a crash course in Canvas, stick around afterwards and I can show you how that works.